Hello and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. In our last two video segments we talked a lot about hard links and we established that a hard link is merely an entry in a directory. We also previously looked at the members of the struct stat and noted that stsize represents the size of the file. So let's take a look at what this means for a directory. First, let's revisit what the size is for the different types of files. A FIFO and a socket have a file size of 0, since they never contain any data. They are used as inter-process communications rendezvous points only. The kernel shuffles the data between the processes and they never hit the disk. A regular file is easy, just count the bytes. Three ASCII characters and a carriage return. A symbolic link contains, as its contents, the path of the target, so in this case, slash wherever, no carriage return here, which is 9. And for devices, ls doesn't even get a size field and instead shows us the device major and minor numbers. So let's take a look at directories now. To do that, we reuse the virtual disk we had previously added and start fresh with a new file system. We mount it under slash mount and shown it to our user. With nothing on this disk yet, we see that it is pretty much empty, with only a single 512 byte block being used. If we create a new directory on this disk, we see that the use block count increases. We now have two 512 byte blocks in use. Looking at the output of the ls, we see that directories appear to use 512 bytes. dir at inode number 4832, which we created, has a size of 512 bytes, as do dot and dot dot. But wait, the disk shows that there are only two 512 byte blocks used. But here we count three. Why is that? Well, take a look at the inode numbers of dot and dot dot. It's the same, meaning they're the same directory, and so we really only have two 512 byte blocks in use. But hold on, how can dot and dot dot be the same? And what's even weirder, even though these two have the same inode number, two, they have different owners and different link counts. So they are not the same directory, even though they have the same inode number. And this is because they exist on different devices. Remember, we mounted a new file system under slash mount. So we have data on disk devwd1a under slash mount, where the root directory of this file system has an inode number of 2, while the root directory of the file system mounted under slash, the root file system, has an inode number of 2 as well. Hopefully this illustrates why we can't have hard links across file systems and why a file is uniquely identified only by the combination of the device and the inode number. Oh, and one more weird thing. On the root file system, both dot and dot dot do point to the same inode. But that is the only instance of dot and dot dot pointing to the same directory, since only in the root do you not have a parent directory. Anyway, so let's get back to the directory size. An empty directory uses 512 bytes. Well, it's not really empty, it contains two entries, dot and dot dot, remember? So if we add a new file to this directory, it would stand to reason that the directory size would increase. Let's give it a try. Hmm. Okay, so we created a third entry, but the directory size remains the same. Likewise, if we add another file. But this isn't getting us anywhere like this. Let's try adding a few more files a bit quicker. Okay, here we add 40 files to the directory that already has two entries, so we have a total of 42 files. Why 42? Come on, you should know this. 42 is the answer to the big question about life, the universe, and everything. Anyway, let's see, how big is our directory now? Hmm, still 512 bytes. But all these files are zero length in size. Maybe if we create a larger file? Let's make the file 3 1 megabyte in size. 1 megabyte is larger than 512 bytes, so surely our directory size has got to increase now. And it doesn't. Still 512 bytes. Okay, so maybe all directories are always 512 bytes in size. Let's just give it one more try and add a 43rd file. Oh, look at that! 
Now our directory is suddenly 1024 bytes in size. Can we add another 42 files? Looks like we can. And with 84 files, we are still within 1024 bytes. And if we add an 85th file, our directory increases again by 512 bytes to 1536 bytes. So perhaps every file in a directory takes roughly 12 bytes or so. Now, 512 divided by 42 is not 12 even, but 12.19. But 43 times 12 equals 516, so we can only fit 42 files into a 512 byte directory, or 84 into a 1024 byte directory. Let's see what happens when we remove file number 85. Remember, that was the file that bumped the directory size from 1024 to 1536. So removing it should bring our directory size back down to well, that didn't work. Our directory is still 1536 bytes in size. Let's remove a whole bunch of files to make sure. See, now we only have 33 files left. That's fewer than 42, so it should fit into a 512 byte directory. But the directory remains 1536 bytes. In fact, even if we remove all files in the directory, the size remains 1536 bytes. Okay, so it looks like 1. Directories can increase in size to accommodate more files than fit into it, but directories do not shrink in size when you remove the files. 2. The file size does not affect the size of the directory the file is in. And 3. A directory entry appears to always take up 12 bytes. All the files we created so far had very short file names. Even if file size doesn't matter, wouldn't it make sense for the file name length to make a difference? That is, would a directory entry that has a long file name also only require 12 bytes? Let's test this theory. Since our directory can shrink, we nuke it and start fresh with a new 512 byte empty directory containing only dot and dot dot. Let's try to create a very long file name. Because we're lazy and don't want to have to type a really long file name ourselves, we use this little pipeline here to generate a file name that's 1024 bytes long. Oh, huh, that file name is too long. As I mentioned in previous lectures, all things are finite. All resources are limited. So it makes sense that we can't just create an infinite length file name. And it looks like our limit for a file name is less than 1024. So by trial and error, we determine that we can create a file with a name that's 255 characters long. That looks like so. And our directory size now is 512 bytes. Let's create a second file with such a long file name. Then we have four directory entries, dot, 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 a, 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 and b, 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 etc. And our directory size now is 1024, which should make some sense. A directory entry must contain the file name. So if we have two file names with 255 characters each, then we are already at 510 bytes, not counting for dot and dot dot, which add at least three more bytes, and not accounting for the additional information a directory entry must provide, the inode mapped to the file. Now this also means that directory entries are not always 12 bytes in size, but instead must be variable length, depending on the length of the file name. Okay, now removing these large files also doesn't shrink the directory, so that's consistent with the behavior we saw earlier. But why doesn't the directory shrink? How does the file system actually organize the directory entries? To inspect that, we again start from scratch with a brand new file system on our disk. Okay, here we create three directory entries with variable length file names. File, longer file name, third file. And the inodes are shown as provided by a good friend ls. Now let's try to take a look at the internal structure of the directory. To do that, we're going to cheat a little bit here. We'll use the hex dump utility to provide us with a hexadecimal representation of the bytes on disk. This works on this file system, but not all file systems let you read a directory. As we discussed in our last video segment, you normally should use the designated system calls readdir or getdns. Anyway, what you see here then are the bytes on disk making up the directory. 
and you can see in it the file names. Each directory entry is made up of 4 bytes for the inode and little Indian display. We can use the BC utility to easily convert numbers between different bases as shown here. So 25C0 in hex is 9664 in decimal. 2 bytes of directory entry length, 0C hex is 12 decimal, meaning the next directory entry will start at byte 13. And oh look at that, here we have our 12 byte directory entry size that we determined earlier for shorter files. Let's keep an eye on the directory entry size here. We get one byte encoding the type of file, with a 4 representing a file of type directory, one byte specifying the length of the file name. And here too, take note, the highest value a single hex byte can have is ff, which in decimal is 255, the maximum length of a file name that we observed earlier. So here, the first directory entry has a file name length of 1, and the next byte is exactly that file name. Hex2e is ASCII dot. So the second entry has inode number 2, is also 12 bytes long, is of type directory, has a file name length of 2, with the file name being dot dot, and the entry padded again to the 4 byte boundary. The third entry has inode number 9965, but it is 16 bytes in length, not 12. It's of type regular file, with a 4 byte length file name followed by null padding, again. The fourth entry has inode number 9966, is 24 bytes long, is of type regular file, and has a file name length of 15. Now the last entry has inode number 9967, but this entry length is 448 bytes. Even though the file name length is only 10 bytes. That is, the last entry spans the entire remainder of the directory. And with that, we're getting an idea how the file system manages the directory. It uses the directory entry length to identify where the next directory entry begins. But if the file name length of the entry plus padding is shorter than the directory entry, then we have space to add a new entry at this point. Okay, let's roll with this theory for the time being. Now what happens when we remove a directory entry? Well, here we do just that, and then we inspect the directory again using hex dump. Note that even though we removed the directory entry, the file name is still there. In fact, all the bytes we had previously seen for longer file name are still in the exact same place. But I thought we removed the entry. And so we did, but removing a directory entry doesn't have to go and erase the data inside of the directory. All we need to do is update the previous directory entry's length to span the entry we just removed. So here we see the directory entry length for file, which previously was 16, is now 40. The record was extended. Which is why our directory didn't shrink. The sum of the record length did not change. Instead, the record length of file was increased, but with a null padding after the file name length, the data left in place is no longer used. Now what happens when we create a new file? Here, let's use a short file name, shorty. After we created shorty, the record length for file shrunk again back to 16 bytes. And the newly created directory entry was added after file, overriding the data that was previously used for longer file name. In fact, we can still see the remainder of longer file name left here, since shorty is much shorter. The decimal entry length for shorty is now 24 decimal. Again, the file name length prevents us from accidentally reading the garbage data left in place from the previous entry. When we remove shorty, the record length for file jumps back up to 40 bytes, spanning shorty and the older, longer file name. So this worked out nicely, because shorty did fit into the space that we had between file and third file. But now, let's add another file, one with a longer file name. A significantly longer name. As you see here, a significantly longer name doesn't fit in between name and third file, so the record length for file remains unchanged. But the record length for third file, 
which previously was 448 bytes, now shrunk to 20 bytes. And a significantly longer name is added at the end of a directory with its record length now spanning the remainder of the directory. Note also that when we created this new file, we reused the inode number 9666. It was previously used for shorty, but now is used for a significantly longer name. This is a good reminder that while an inode does identify a file uniquely, you have no guarantee that a file by a given inode accessed at one time is the same when accessed another time, as inodes may be reused if they were previously unallocated. Okay, one more round. This time we'll use really long file names. Here you see the 255 byte length file names AAAAA and BBBBBBB, etc. Since they didn't fit into the available space in between files, they were added. And since BBBBB bumps the total size over 512 bytes, the directory was extended to 1024 bytes in size. Now, if we remove AAAAA and then create a few shorter files, let's see where they end up. CCC fits into the slot of shorty. DDD fits right behind that one. But EEE does not fit right there, but we have a large hole left from AAAA. So EEE ends up right there. With its record length being 392 bytes and ending where BBBBB begins. So in this way, we see why the directory does not shrink and how it juggles the variable length directory entries. Phew, there was some fine hex dump spelunking we did there, huh? Let's recap. For starters, directories are file system dependent and different file systems may implement them differently. On the Unix file system, or the BSD variant, the FAT file system, or FFS, they consist of a number of directory blocks, which for efficiency's sake are aligned on the physical block size of the disk. The size of the directory is independent of the sizes of the files therein. This makes sense, since it only contains the mapping of the file name to the inode, not the file data itself. But the directory size does depend on the length of the file names in it, as we've seen. And the directory may grow in size, but not shrink, due to the way it juggles the different entries of varying length. Now, other file systems may behave rather different, but perhaps you want to give it a try and find out how by running similar examples on the memory file system used on a reference VM for temp, on a macOS system, or on a Linux system that you have access to. When you do, pay attention to link count and size as you add and remove files, and see whether file name length changes directory entry size on those file systems too. But enough about directories. Next time, we'll talk about a few system functions relating to system databases like the password file, file times, system identification, and the like. Until then, thanks for watching. Cheers!